Ennis, you're wrong, in my opinion. He can fit in there with those top guys. Uh, and I'll tell you why. He's a complete package. And I'm going to go a step further. It's going to probably get a few draws to drop right now, hearing me say this. You got a chance to see the complete fighter with Ennis. He was in there with a guy that has talent, a guy that knows how to fight. He's got a big amateur background, a guy who has a terrible style, a style that nobody would want to fight. Ennis was too good. He would have beat he would have beat 90% of the welterweight. As we reach the end of July, the two undoubtedly best super welterweights on the planet are about to settle their differences. However, a constellation of young men is already preparing to follow in their footsteps, leaving their mark in the history of boxing. Undoubtedly, the most talented among them is 26-year-old native of Pennsylvania, Jaron Ennis who already boasts a better record than Errol Spence and could very well become the guy to dethrone the undisputed champion. Friends, today's video will be dedicated to the five best fights in Jaron Ennis' career. If you're not a fan of this guy yet, now is the time to get on the bandwagon. Please don't forget to like and comment in four words and also subscribe to never miss new videos. And now, let's get started. Number 5. Roman Villa Jaron was born into a family immersed in the world of boxing. His father is a professional trainer and his brothers also actively compete, though not with the same success as Ennis. To gain experience and skills, he naturally started boxing at the amateur level where he won prizes and later secured the Golden Gloves title on his second attempt, also emerging victorious in the US Championship. In the adjacent weight categories, Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson were causing a stir. He failed to qualify for the Olympic boots as he was stopped by the stylistically awkward Gary Russell. Not wanting to wait another four long years, Ennis made his mark in professional boxing where he began knocking opponents out left and right. Up to this day, not even five decisions can be found in any of his fights and in the beginning, he was like a pure version of Mike Tyson. In early 2023, Ennis won the temporary IBF Championship title and recently defended it. I know, I know, defending a temporary belt sounds strange, but such are the times we live in. The honor of becoming the first contender for this not-so-complete belt went to a very formidable Venezuelan puncher from the top, Roman Villa, with a record of 26-1. The guy is genuinely dangerous and by passing this test, Ennis could once again prove that he truly deserves to be the top contender in the near future. It's going to be uh, great, you know, it's, you know, he got a lot of knockouts and stuff like that, power puncher, you know, so we'll see, we'll see on Saturday night, but a victory over him is a great thing and, uh, and I do it in a big statement and, and I do it by a stoppage, that's, that's going to say a lot, you know, so can't wait. Uh, look, when, when I fought when I fought against uh, Rashidi Ellis, I, you know, like I was just over the moon with, with everything, and now I'm, I'm here ready for another challenge. Uh, if I win on Saturday night, then bring on anybody, bring on Spence, yes, bring on Crawford, bring on everyone. I'm gonna be ready for whatever comes next because uh, God, will, God will have set him in my path. What a barrage poor Venezuelan's head had to endure. Ennis attacked it from all possible angles and with such strikes that only the Terminator could withstand. The most interesting part was that almost every round, Jaron added a new strike that created new difficulties for his opponent. If initially he used jabs and power doubles, by the third round, breathtaking body punches were introduced, followed by uppercuts that sent his opponent reeling backwards. Meanwhile, Ennis changed stances, smoothly moved around the ring on his long legs and defended so well that only every fifth powerful punch from the puncher would land. By the 10th round, Roman was already being prepared as a sacrificial lamb and Jaron added the final touches, finishing him off with a long leg. He was, yeah, I knew he was a tough guy, but I, I knew I was going to break him down, you know, eventually, you know, because he just, you know, he had his hands up high, high guard. And uh, just be he walked forward, walked forward, walked forward, you know, no head movement. So I knew I was going to eventually break him down. I just had to take my time a little more, and I knew I, I knew eventually I'd get it. In the tenth, as tough as they come, Roy Bonvia, a punishing shot after shot. 
Number 4. Juan Carlos Abreu Even before Jaron claimed the temporary championship title, he had a whole list of exciting fights, but we need to highlight the most thrilling and spectacular one, which undoubtedly was his encounter with well-trained Dominican fighter Juan Carlos Abreu. Before facing the veteran Boots, Jaron had defeated some decent guys, but genuine boxers among them could be counted on one hand. The best of them was perhaps Armando Alvarez, an undefeated and bright prospect with 18 wins in the professional circuit. Ennis and Alvarez were given the opportunity to compete for the vacant WBC silver title and Jaron took full advantage. He gracefully and effortlessly defeated the prospect, sending him down four times in a single round. The entire fight lasted less than 10 minutes. After that, people began to talk about the Philadelphia prospect for the first time, and then came the test against the veteran. At 31 fights, Abreu had already participated in nearly 30 bouts and had not fought for a full-fledged title, but he was considered a tough guy, especially after two consecutive wins. He said, yes, he's, he's young, and he's, the way he sees this fight is going to be his youth versus his experience. He fought a lot of young guys, a lot of people with ability, and we're going to find out the day of the fight. I'm not going to allow the fight to go the distance. I'm going to I'm gonna fight him in my territory. Either he knocks me out or I'm going to knock him out, but this fight will end up in a knockout because if... Uh, I paraphrase. If if it gets too if it gets too ugly, where I'm behind on points, I'm just gonna go for it and going for it. If he knocks me out, he knocks me out. Or I knock him out, I knock him out. In his fights, the Dominican fighter was used to pressing forward aggressively. Even if he got hit, he continued to move forward to retaliate and knock out opponents. However, that style became his downfall on this night. Jaron countered Abreu with striking precision and agility at every, even the slightest approach. Ennis didn't allow himself to get hit and repeatedly shook his opponent even with jabs. Nothing surprising here, as the guy put his heart and soul into his strikes. The heat escalated in the fifth round when Jaron torpedoed Abreu with a devastating uppercut, sending him to the canvas. The power behind that punch was immense, but even that proved insufficient for the finish. Once Jaron realized that, he unleashed a brutal onslaught in the style of the best street brawls of Philadelphia in the sixth round. A series of wild hooks and two thunderous knockdowns led to the immediate stoppage of the terrifying beating. No one had ever dealt with the Dominican in such a manner throughout his entire career. He's starting to exchange he's center of the ring. There's a right. Oh, that uppercut sends Abreu to the canvas. Number three, Sergey Lipinev. Just three months after devouring the soul of the Dominican, Jaron stepped into his next fight. This time, the vacant IBO title was on the line, and the second contender for it was a South African guy with a record of 28 to two. The fight ended in the first round due to a fierce head clash. One bad, bad dude. Whether in fights or in real life, the tempo of this young man was no joke, so he prepared for his next performance in the spring. On April the 10th, 2021, Ennis was matched against a rather colorful opponent named Sergei Lipinets. In just over 30 years of life, the samurai had already devoted himself to two sports, boxing and kickboxing. He pursued boxing at the amateur level, winning tournaments in Europe, but since 2014, he fully embraced the art of using his fists. Three years before this fight, he fought for the IBF title against the talented Mikey Garcia, but lost by decision. Uh, they don't know what I'm going to bring. That's why they always say that. I'm an all-around fighter. They don't know how I'm going to fight. I can, I can fight uh, several different ways. and. That's why they always see stuff like that and or they try to see stuff like that. He uh, is my opposition, which was, uh, um, I think, better than uh, Ennis' opposition. Uh, I already had fought Mikey Garcia, won 12 rounds. Uh, I fought two-time champion of the world, uh, Alamont Peterson. And um, th those, are, those are guys that 
uh, will push you to the edge. And uh, I already had done 12 rounds. Um, the, only, the only thing, I mean, as far as the professional experience, I mean, Ennis has more uh, professional fights than I do. And um, the only difference is he never went 12 rounds. And uh, I'm sure he'll be ready and I'll be ready as well. So let's get it on. Jaron showed off his skills and played mind games with Sergey. Employing feints, Ennis changed stance, moved his hips, and confused the tense Kazakh. At the beginning of the second round, Boots delivered a very serious combination to the body, causing Lipinets' face to flush with red. The American's punches were already hard, but with every passing minute, he seemed to invest even more into them. Over time, even Jaron's jab started penetrating Sergei's defense like plywood, and in the fourth round, a crushing uppercut paralyzed Lipinets' body. The veteran collapsed on the canvas, and the fight was finished. No, it wasn't my hardest fight. Uh, I was in there, you know, having fun and doing what I, what I wanted to do. Uh, I don't take nothing away from Sergey Lipinets. Uh, he a yeah. great fighter, but uh, I was just in there having fun, doing me, you know, being real relaxed and putting on putting on a show. In his 13th pro bout. Less than a minute left in the first half of this 12 round of Fair and John Lewin in there with the left hand drops. Lippin yet, no doubt about that. That's it, son. That's it. That's and the it. fight That's has it. been stopped. Let's all calm down. And That's it, Jerron son. Boots That's it, champ. passes his biggest test in flying colors, recording his 25th KO. Number two, Castillo Clayton. After Sergey, another experienced opponent fell into Jaron's hands. Puerto Rican Thomas Delorme, who, by the way, was even less fortunate than others as he was floored in the first round, suffering two brutal knockdowns. The prospect known as Jaron had gained tremendous momentum, evident from his streak of 29 victories. People were already talking about him as the potential best in the division, even though Ennis hadn't yet fought for the title. For his milestone 30th bout, he finally received the well-deserved recognition. No, his opponent wasn't Canadian talent Castillo Clayton. It was the status of the fight itself that was noteworthy. The winner would go on to compete for the IBF title, which turned out to be temporary, but that's beside the point. As for Clayton from Canada, the undefeated war machine was a six-time national champion and was on a relentless path towards coveted titles. The only thing standing in his way was the seemingly impenetrable prospect from Philadelphia. The battle of young talents resembled the Hunger Games, and only the strongest survived. Ennis began to act so sharply and unexpectedly that the Canadian simply couldn't catch up with what was happening and started getting hit. Ennis not only overwhelmed him physically but also mentally, displaying his unreal superiority. If in the first minute Clayton was still throwing punches, by the end of the round, he seemed desperate and just waited for his opponent to stop for a moment. From the next round, Boots shifted from relentless pressure to his usual style of an active counterpuncher, giving Clayton a chance to catch his breath. It was a trap! As soon as the prospect thought he had control of the fight, Jaron immediately lunged forward and landed a perfect overhand right in close quarters. The punch landed right on the ear, leaving Clayton with no chance. When the Canadian got back up, his legs betrayed him and the referee without hesitation stopped the fight. One punch knockout by Jaron Ennis. I keep telling y'all every single time, y'all know my slogan, we in and out like a ride, we don't get paid for overtime. <laughs> you know, uh, tough guy, nobody never stopped him and I thought he was going to get up, but I seen he got up and he fell over there and he went over there, so I was like, it's over. <laughs> they, they feel like they need to, to change the plan. And oh, oh. that right hand down goes Clayton for the second time in his Four, career. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Number one, Karen Chikadzian. The news of a bout for the temporary title between Jaron and Karen Chukatsian emerged. For most viewers, that name didn't mean much, but the young man was genuinely dangerous. His atypical style was a real headache for all opponents, as evidenced by his record of 21-1, with the only loss happening many years ago. 
In recent years, he hadn't lost to anyone and had fought for nearly all possible secondary belts. In short, if you need an example of a top-level boxer without a belt, Karen would be the perfect candidate. For both him and Boots, this fight was the most important in their careers, as everything was at stake. It is my chance to show myself to the American public because everybody knows the real box is in the United States. Then I'll do all my best to provide the pleasure and fun to all the American uh, publics and all over the world. Like I, like I always say though, you know, I don't, I don't go in there looking for a knock. I go in there, you know, to, to have fun, you know, and, and establish my jab and, and and put on the show for the fans. And but if I see that opening, I'm definitely taking it. So, you know, I ain't, I ain't afraid to, you know, get him out of here early. Y'all you know, know my slogan. I'm in and out like a robbery. The Ukrainian moved enchantingly. His technical footwork, especially to the left, sometimes made Jaron look awkward. Although Ennis is usually very precise, and only truly exceptional fighters can make him miss so often. On the other hand, footwork alone doesn't win fights, and Chikatsyan didn't offer anything else. Despite his mobility, he lacked accuracy, and while Ennis may have been a bit messy at times, he still landed his hard shots. Around the third round, Ennis realized that he was more comfortable fighting in a southpaw stance and stopped switching, focusing on his punches. Special emphasis was placed on jabs and straights, but in rare moments when the Ukrainian pressed against the ropes, Ennis unleashed uppercuts that were simply devastating. Compared to the bearish punches from Jaron, Karen's jabs didn't look convincing and he was losing rounds. The most surprising thing that Boots demonstrated was his endurance and speed, which he maintained until the final rounds. The fight reached its conclusion, leaving no questions. 120 to 108 on all judges' scorecards. It was a total domination. Jaron Ennis fought for 36 minutes and proved his championship potential. It's a lot of things that I, I could have done better, you know, uh, cut the ring off a little better. Stay a little sharper, you know, uh, not looking, you know, not, I wasn't necessarily looking for the knockout, but just having more fun, like how I was in the, in the middle rounds and things like that. So, you know, uh, but back to, the, back to the gym on Monday, you know, uh, to get better, you know, sharpen up. Often prospects are inflated to superstars without clear potential. Amidst such soap bubbles, Boots stands out. The level of his opponents combined with their psychological pressure grows Yet he continues to dominate and deliver head chopping blows fiercer than an axe. If Jaron continues in the same vein, he will soon make his way to face the winner of the Spence Crawford bout. And then we will see can any of the experienced champions oppose his explosive style, or is it indeed the era of Ennis?